So here we are, basically the last real uh, out of order episode occurring before the first episode of the series. Uh, I, I get why they did this, it's just whatever. You know, uh, there's something I've been meaning to say for a bit now, and that's this gentleman right here. D. Bradley Baker deserves special props for this show because he's the voice of the clones, and he does a really good job of basically being the same voice, but varying up his tone just enough so you can tell it's a different person talking. He does a really good job of it, and I want to give the man tons of praise. He's the kind, it's basically the kind of thing that I tried to do with the, you know, the original uh, Paper Mario 2 theater and arguably failed miserably at. So definite props there. I've noticed that the general quality is definitely up here. Like, this episode isn't the best well-written, but I feel... Because, like, the dialogue feels the same in terms of overall construction. And the sequence of events feels the same. But even the slapstick with Jar Jar is toned down to the point where it's not really the primary focus and is being used to good effect rather than simply, ha-ha, look at the silly stuff. In addition to that, the construction of the narrative, as in the overall beats of the plot, feels a lot more tight, uh, tightly woven, as if it makes more sense and the beats of the story follow you know, more sequentially and more logically rather than just kind of going all over the place and doing whatever. It also seems to uh, rely a little bit less on people being stupid in order for events to progress forward. The idea that the t uh, Toydarian, excuse me, couldn't think of the species for a second there. I kept wanting to say Nemoidian, but then was the other guys. The Toydarians and their insistence on neutrality is certainly something that makes a degree of sense given what little we know about them. And the fact that the Trade Federation is actively going out of the way to hurt that also makes sense, even though the Trade Federation, as mentioned here, is technically neutral as well in this, is in this conflict. But in, in other words, I like pretty much all of the directions this is going in. The biggest thing that made me wonder was... Uh, Mr. What's his face? I can't even think of his damn name. But the 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 renegade, you know, the rebel on the on the ground leader of the uh, the Twi'leks. God damn, I can't think of any names today. His they mention his negative bias towards the Republic, and that makes sense. But does nobody does he or his people not care that a Jedi literally laid down his life in order to take care of and support their effort to get their own people out, especially their families? No? Okay, I was just wondering. It was a nice last stand. What do you got, you know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, I don't have much else to share. Like I said, the general quality does seem to be going up. I suppose we'll see if that continues going forward when we get into the rest of actual Season 3. Because for the most part, we've just been rehashing, you know, previous story stuff. I think... Yeah, let me look at the list here really quick. It looks like... Uh, for the most part... Most of our upcoming stuff is going to be relatively sequential, except that's a completely not true. What the hell? It goes 5, 6, 7, 2, 4, 8, and then back to Season 1. And then 9, 10, 11, 15, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> Who did this? Anyways, anyways, I'll see you guys next time.